It's been a long ass week, man, it's time to go. I'ma call up the crew, we gon' hit the liquor store. We gon' pre fade in the parking lot. You can meet us there, bring a friend. I got friends, yo, we all need a pair. We might not even make it up in this club. We don't give a fuck about a booth. We too busy trying to booty rub on the dance floor, sweating all. We vibing on the alcohol, no memory tomorrow. <laughs> We're good. Chandler is the one looking the most fresh out of everybody. I know. You look so different without a hat. I know. Then again, that's what people say about me. <laughs> like, I've never seen you without a hat on. All right, but all the cameras are on? We're good. All right, cool. I say we just get into this Let's then. Get into it. Underground podcast. We're here with Vanessa Lene. How are you doing? I'm great. How are you, Andrew? I'm doing good. We had some technical difficulties, but we're finally always. started here. There's always some te technical difficulties, but we got the studio what do you think yeah. of this studio this is awesome this is a cool little spot i can't wait till i'm up there i know right that's yeah. just like looking at these every time i look at these now i just think what is the third one gonna look like <laughs> i've seen the photos I low key have the cover photo picked out all right the red background and we'll see we'll see what uh what we end up doing for the font color stuff like that that's always big sweet but i'm excited to see it but how are you doing? Are you doing good? I'm good. Busy as always, but busy's good. So what are you like working on right now? What is what is a busy day in Vanessa Lene's life right now, oh, 2021? Man. I usually have at least 12 hour days and then I go home and I work on music. Uh, right now I have a show coming up. So next Sunday on February 28th, 805 Live, I will be the headliner. So 805 Live, you're going to be there. You've known Contra. He's the one that runs it, Contra and Jess. How yeah. did you first meet them, get involved with the 805 Live? Honestly, I don't remember how I met them, <laughs> like at all. But I feel like uh, maybe a month ago was the most time I actually got to spend with them one-on-one. -on -one, and I was like, wow, these are really cool people. Like, I want to be around them all the time now. They're super cool. For real. They have that energy. Like, yeah. They're just like off in this weird compound in this weird part of Ventura I've never been to. <laughs> you pull up there and then it's just like great vibes. Secret spot. It is, seriously. VIP invite only. So, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so probably by the, by the time that this is out, you'll have done the show already. Yes. But what are you looking forward to doing the show? Is this your first time performing in a long time? In a while, yeah. I mean, I can't even remember the last time it was, but now since the whole, you know, hiding pandemic thing uh shows have been definitely not going on so uh, it's exciting it's going to be limited but we're going to stream live as well so you can catch it there on instagram on i think believe it's 805 live their instagram page uh, so if you can't get on that vip list you can definitely still watch yeah exactly and it's like a really really nice setup how they do the live yeah. like i think i was telling you like contra has like five camera people it's all going on at yeah. once contra's like two computers <laughs> like it's crazy how he does He's it madman but it's not just like oh one phone instagram live like they really do it well yeah so speaking of the pandemic obviously it's been a little obstacle for artists mm -hmm. but I, I don't think I heard of you until probably pandemic time, probably only a like few, maybe four or five months ago is when like Vanessa Lene came to my attention. And it seems like you've done a lot during the pandemic. Yeah, honestly, to be quite honest, I've probably done more in this time than I have done in the past few years. Uh, just just been on the grind of like, you know what? Nothing is promised and I just gotta go for it. And uh, you know, finances and everything are so unpredictable. So, I mean, why not make money streaming and doing what I love? Yeah, for real. <laughs> so do you think that the pandemic actually did catalyze something in you to like oh, really 100%, push it? Oh, 100%. And what exactly has changed? Like, I only know the, the coronavirus, Vanessa. I don't know the pre-COVID <laughs> Vanessa. Like, what do you think has really helped, like, really started, like, more? Like, do you think you've made more music, made more connections? What do you think you've done that's been uh, different? Definitely networking. That's something that I never really did a whole lot of um, and collabing. I'm just kind of focusing on that and doing more visuals. I think uh, I have enough music in the holster. I just need more visuals. So that's what I've really been focusing on. And I actually just shot a video. I'm sure you saw it called Get It. Uh, oh, yeah, you did because you said Vanessa La Dance. <laughs> <laughs> that was like yeah. a very impressive video. Like, well, thank you. I usually, you know, a lot of 805 artists, they make videos, they're cool. But yours, like, was really impressive. Like, you had a dance team, right? You yes. hired, you went to FD, got this crazy garage warehouse thing. Like, how how come you decided to, 
Like, okay, something I was I was surprised by that I found out just a couple of days ago is that song is not a new song. No. That's an older song. Yeah. So why did you go back into the bag, pick this song, and decide to now, all of a sudden, in 2021, make this crazy video? Honestly, I don't even know. It was just one of those things that popped in my head. I was like, you know what? That's a banger. Let's do something with it. People are going to like this song. They just don't know about it because there's no visual. That's a thing. And it's crazy to me that it's taken me this long to realize that because I'm such a visual person. <laughs> but it just made sense. And um, and I think it's something that it can be very catchy and people like it. Everybody who's watched the video loves the dancing vibe. So mm -hmm. I think I'm going to do more of that. Are you like a dancer? Or is Not that at all. Like you just, did you, okay, there was choreographed, <laughs> like, choreographed dancing in this video right yes that you are a part of yes did you guys have like practice sessions yeah leading up to it? we had some rehearsals i think maybe four or five maybe six but I, I think it was more of like we got everything done in a month month and a half getting ready for the shoot but yeah and you hired like a team of dancers yeah these aren't just friends it, off the street like well, these are real dancers uh one was a friend actually i met him uh, maybe nine years ago and uh, we've just never worked together. We've always wanted to, just have never had the opportunity to. And um, so I reached out to him because I knew he's just amazing. His name's Matthew. Um, and then my girlfriend actually had a friend who wanted to work on some choreography, you know, projects and stuff. So uh, actually my girlfriend was kind of the ringleader in getting all the dancers. I really only brought Matthew. And okay. um, it's pretty cool because everyone involved now, they're 100% on board, supportive of my dream. It's like an unconditional love team that I just formed off of this one video. So I got way more out of the video than I was expecting and then I actually wanted, which is which is awesome. So And you're somebody that definitely stands out to me for like having a real big team, it seems like behind you. Like you had all these people in the video, you had a release party for the video. Mm -hmm. Like there seems to be a lot of people that are in your corner. Like is that something that that kind of just naturally happened or is that something that is important to you to get this team and, and have a group of people helping push your movement yeah definitely that's it's honestly it just happened within the last couple months um before it was usually just myself doing everything myself um my producer was galactic boogie he recorded all my projects and then other than that it was just really my mom and my sister pushing me and that's it um, and the fans, but uh, now it's nice to have a group of people that are pushing me and while they're working on their own stuff, you know, we have dancers, we have people that are, um, you know, trying to be models and just getting into the modeling career and, uh, you know, someone has a podcast, someone has a blog, so everyone's doing their own thing, but they're all just, they see the bigger vision, the bigger, the bigger picture of everything and everyone's just working as a team, which is really cool. That's awesome. So. Something else that I was surprised about, and I talked to you about this at the photo shoot, was when I'm doing my research, I figure out who you are, I'm looking through YouTube. Mm -hmm. I see an Oxnard freestyle mm -hmm. where you're in a record store. Yeah. And this was like eight years ago yeah. or something. Yeah. Like, how do you think you've changed from that moment oh, gosh. to now? I mean, you had the same, like, you have the same kind of braggadocious, confident flow, mm -hmm. but I'm sure that you've transformed a lot in your own eyes throughout that crazy time. Yeah. Is that, do you think you have? Definitely, I think uh, it's very, it's weird to watch myself and like hear myself on old stuff um, because I feel like not only have I grown as an artist, but definitely as a person. So the things that I rap about are very different now. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's one of those you watch yourself transition and I think that um, I definitely am in the place that I want to be now. Mm -hmm. you know, so, And kind of taking it back a little bit too, you are friends with Chris the Thrillist who was yeah. on our second issue. Yeah. How did you like originally get involved with Chris? How did you know him? I was surprised you guys knew each other, but yeah. it made sense because he said he lived in see me for a little bit, yeah. more park more area. Park area yeah. Like how, how did you get first involved to, with Chris the Thrillist? Honestly, he was in a group called The Profound Sound. Uh, two of the guys in that group, their aunt, I believe, was friends with my mom, like back in high school. And my mom was talking to her friend about how I was rapping. And then she's like, oh, she's got to hang out with my nephews. And that was it. Okay. I just started hanging out with them and recording, and that was it. So it was just like the <laughs> parent hookup. Yeah, parent that's what I'm telling you. Mom and sister pushed me hard. That's funny. <laughs> and what is like your relationship with Chris now? Like, do you talk to him often? 
Uh, not frequently, but I mean, we always support each other on social media and stuff. But I'm excited he's gonna be at the show next week. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we'll be at catch the show. up. He's a dope dude. Like I, I only met him for the first time, probably like end of summer, right when we yeah. started doing Underground Issue Two. And like, there's just like, there's just a lot of good people in the 805 doing cool stuff and have good vibes to them. And like, Chris is somebody that's just like the pinnacle of that. Yeah, there really are. And I like that you guys are doing what you're doing because there's so many artists that I have no idea who they are and they have no idea who I am. And there's some really good people out here with, that are very talented. Mm -hmm. But um, I think it's because it's it's mainly just been a competition. So I like what you guys are doing. You're bringing everyone together and everyone's kind of realizing the more we help each other, you know, the farther we go. So is that like something that you've like, is that a lens that you've looked at the 805 rap scene for a while through like a competitive lens, like yeah. me versus everybody. Yeah, pretty much. And I think that's why I don't have a team. It's like, I'm very to myself, except recently I'm like, this isn't working. This is not how it's supposed to go. You know, um, we build when we work together. So um, I think that's why that's been my main focus lately. Mm -hmm. And so we go to the photo shoot, issue three photo shoot. First time I ever met you in person. Mm -hmm but probably your first time meeting a lot of people there. Yeah. What did you, what were the vibes that day? Like, how did you, what did you think of it? Like, is it what you expected meeting all these people? Was it, had you heard of any of the other artists before? No, I had not. I had not, I hadn't heard of anyone actually. That was really cool though. I mean, everyone, um, everyone was really cool there. Everyone was nice. Everyone was, I don't know. It's not the scene that I've been used to. You know, I've been in this game for a little bit. And uh, not everyone's always the nicest. So it was really refreshing to go into a group where people were just excited to be there and like get to meet new people. So, yeah. yeah. Do you have any like bad stories that you're willing to share of just like, just <laughs> things that have happened? Like why do, you, why do you think that it's not, the 805 isn't the most welcoming scene? Mm, I mean, maybe it was all, also because I was in LA as well. So maybe it's not just 805, but uh, it's, it's not, I don't want to talk about specific stories, but I think it's mainly about um, people are fearful of uh, being outshined or someone being better than them. So if we took that away and we just really focused on, you know, we could help each other, I think would be so much better. And I think that uh, a lot of, I've just felt a lot of that and I've seen a lot of that in the music industry. And so it kind of tainted me a little bit in that way. I feel, yeah. especially because I feel like a lot of a lot of people I work with in underground are like just starting out mm -hmm. and they've only made music with their friends. Yeah, they haven't really had like industry experience. And that's where I think you differentiate from a lot of the other artists is that like you've you've been in the L.A. scene a little bit. You've mm -hmm. dabbled with other people. Um, do you think that that has like ultimately helped shape you into the artist you are today? Like it's probably provided you with a lot of lessons, I would guess. Yeah, definitely. I've learned a lot of lessons the hard way, um, but it's good. I mean, I feel like a little more seasoned and uh, I don't know, like I always say, I'm the rookie and the vet, you know, I'm new. I'm still new. I'm still fresh. Um, and now that i am got this whole turnaround attitude, um, I'm excited. How do you think that, okay, how do you think that like people see you in the music game? Honestly, I don't know uh, because you know, I'll go to an interview or something and they'll play my song. They had never heard it before. Like I, the first time I went on to uh, Rico and Mambo and they played my song, Take It Back. And that one's a little more, you know, aggressive. And it was like, wow, you're so little. And, you, you know, <laughs> this came out of you. And it, it's like, well, why? Because I'm little. <laughs> like, but then there's also the side of me that's really sweet. And people like, I don't know. I don't know what people see. So I guess it just depends on what mood you catch me in that day. Cause that's like, a, that's a big thing as me, like just meeting you. This is probably like our third time meeting each other in person mm -hmm. and listening to your music. Like it is hard to get a read on you. I honestly feel like, <laughs> because like on one end you're super chill, nice, friendly. And then sometimes I'm listening to your music and I'm like, oh my gosh. But <laughs> do you think that maybe that kind of connotation comes off because you're a girl? And yeah. people expect a different vibe Honestly, from a girl yes. rapper. Yeah. Do you think like, cause I don't, I don't personally think I classify you in my brain as like, oh, girl rapper, she should be doing this or that or whatever. Uh -huh. But I think it's still, you do just kind of have like some short, sort of shock value. 
Well, I good. Like. That's a good thing. Thank you very much. Is that something that like, <laughs> like what side of Vanessa are you like outside of music? Are you? Oh, I'm very, uh, I'm very quiet, very to myself. Um, I'm very like goal driven and whatever else I'm doing. Um, but I'm very, people, a lot of people will say I'm shy. I'm not shy. I'm just very reserved with my energy and who I give it to. So mm -hmm. well, I can't, it might come off as standoffish, but I'm really just, you know, just observing. Just Vanessa <laughs> Lynette. Yeah, I'm just chill. You are chill. You yes. are chill. Do you have, okay, so Get It just came out, the music mm -hmm. video. And I was looking at your disc discography and you haven't had an album in a couple years. Mm -hmm. Is that something that's in, in the plans in the near future? It's in the works, actually, yeah. So I've been writing, um, just low-key about it. Um, but yeah, I am writing. Uh, I definitely have... S I probably have the next album ready. It just needs to be recorded. So I will be getting in the lab soon. Okay, and, and um, the lab as in... The 805. Once again, yeah, yeah. 805, 805 Lab, Conscious yeah. Thing. So he's gonna be the one that's actually like running your sessions. I, I think so. I think I found my new uh, my new home there. You know, he invited me, and I've been there once, and I loved it. Just the vibe, him and Jess, and the three of us just sitting there, and you know, it's just it's a good time, and it feels uh, it feels safe. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like I can just go in there, do my thing, and they they'll tell me straight up, "Oh, let's do that again," and I love that. You know, I love when someone do isn't just like a yes man. That's like, "Oh yeah, that's dope." Like, I don't want that. I don't need that. Because that can, that can <laughs> be hard. Like, I'm obviously not an engineer or producer. Blue is an engineer. But it's it's got to be hard for an engineer to, like, stand up or give their opinion to an artist, especially if they never worked with them before. Yeah. Because <laughs> some artists are very, very, uh, you know, cocky and I'm the best. Who are you to tell me? You know, and no, I want the I want the tough criticism. You know, I want to know. I want my stuff to be good. Mm-hmm. So you're open. You're open to other people's opinion on your sound, on on things like that, really personal music, things like that. Yeah, when it comes to structuring stuff, but uh, I don't receive it well when someone tells me to change my lyrics. Okay, <laughs> I've had so that that's happen. Where the line draws. That's, I've had that happen in the industry, and I was like, no, okay, you're not on my song. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Yeah, and well, he's actually a well-known artist, and I was just like, no, if you're gonna tell me how to write my song. Uh, because you don't like that lyric, uh, I don't. It's okay. That's what you don't Thanks. like. Yeah, I feel that. Yeah, that would be tough. Like that's that's like my thing though is is the writing. That's what I do. So that's the one thing I will stay strong on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So kind of take me through your writing process. Is this something you do? You usually write in the studio. Are you at home? You write stuff down. Take it to the studio. You ever freestyle? Um, I usually will write at home just something I find on YouTube. I'll just listen to some instrumentals. Um, and sometimes it'll be just the beats going on in the in the studio and I'll just start rapping. It's, I don't know, it's hit or miss. Mm -hmm. It's either there or it's not if, if I'm vibing or not. And a lot of it's written at home though. A lot of it's written at home. You have like a certain vibe that you like to be in? Like, do you have to be in a certain mood? Does it have to be a weekend? Um, it just has to be free time. And I have to be not, you know, not exhausted. <laughs> Yeah, because then the brain's not working right. That makes sense. That makes yeah. sense. So something else that is impressive to me about you is I've seen some artists do it. Some underground artists do it, like Tie Fighter, for example. I'm wearing his clothing right now. Like some people are really trying to build a brand around mm -hmm. themselves, and that's that's the feeling I get from you. Like you have the Vanessa Lene hat, mm -hmm. right? You're yeah. we're, you're getting posters made of you. Is that like something that you've always done, or is this kind of like trying to build the brand? around your name something that's that's someone new yeah I'm, I'm actually glad that you touched on that because i would have forgotten because i'm really bad at remembering things <laughs> uh i actually started my own label a few years back it's called Loch ness entertainment um partly because it has the word ness in it and uh, uh just because when i'm on the mic or i'm on stage i'm in the booth people don't expect me to be a monster sometimes so for me it's really important i think that when you're really um, in love with something that you do, there's a moment where you just shine. So there's, there's moments where I'll be on stage and I can feel myself in that pocket. And there's moments where I'm in the booth and I can feel myself in that pocket. And I think that a lot of people, uh, whether they're an artist or an athlete, they all have those moments. And so for me, it's really important 
um, for my fans to understand that I want everyone to be that monster. So um, I'm really pushing the brand uh, Loch Ness uh, as the motto being, you know, be the monster within, let the monster out. Um, so, you know, all my fans, I want them to be little monsters. Okay, so you started that label. When did you start that? Mm, probably like, gosh, I don't even know, five, seven years ago, but I didn't really start really pushing everything till this year. The till pandemic this year. Hit, yeah. And are you, you're an independent artist. Yes. Are you like, do you consider yourself signed to that label? Uh, no, I just figure I run it and that's it. <laughs> okay, gotcha. Would you want to like what are what are some goals you have with the label? I didn't know that you started that. Like, are you have you reached out to other artists? Do you have people on your radar that that you might want to represent through that label? Not yet, but that's down the road. You know, there's going to come a time where maybe I I don't want to perform as much. Maybe I just want to songwrite. Um, you know, maybe I want to help some artists that are in the 805 get them you know where to to where they want to be and what they want to do so i think i see myself doing that down the road Mm -hmm. so and something that was surprising when we were just talking before is you said that you don't listen to like much 805 music you Mm -hmm. don't know that many people but i feel like you do like you've been you've been in the 805 rap scene for long enough to have met people and done stuff i'm just curious because i really didn't get into 805 music at all until like maybe a year and a half ago Mm -hmm. how have you seen the 805 music scene change throughout the time that you've been involved in it have you seen things different that are happening now that weren't happening five years ago yes definitely the style of music everyone kind of sounds the same these days you think Um, so yeah and and the people that i know like the mark fords and the inzom like those are all like lyricists and that's the those are the type of artists that i gravitate towards so that's what i'm going to listen to and now when i hear the newer stuff a lot of it sounds like what you hear on the radio and it all kind of sounds the same to me so i kind of stick with the old group the old group okay got you so mark ford i've met mark ford yeah. one time i haven't met Inzom, but i know the name he's dope he's actually in that cypher with me um at oh, the record really? store yeah Okay, uh, I'm glad you brought that back up. Like, how how did that cipher start? Or like, how did it manifest? How did who else was in it? Where are those people now? Like, it was just such a crazy thing to see that mm-hmm. on your YouTube because it was just like a piece of 805 history. I really felt like. like I could tell from the views, the comments, the likes that it definitely had like buzz at the time it yeah, came out. It did. Was that like a big moment at the time? What year was that? Maybe 2013? Honestly, I don't remember. <laughs> I think it was 2013. I'm going to look it up right now. Okay. Yeah, it was dope. Um, I think, I don't know really what's going on with the other artists other than Inzom because, you know, I'll, I see him a lot more on social media than anyone else. But yeah. Was that like, who hit you up to start that? Like who... Do you remember who organized it? Who filmed it? I think it was um, JD Films from The Cypher Effect. And uh, I don't remember how the opportunity was presented to me, but I took it. You took it? <laughs> yeah. Okay, I'm trying to find it. Damn. Do you remember what? I guess I could put in your name and it would come up. But what That's record store was that? Was that? Is, does that still exist? No, I don't think it does. Um Gosh, I don't remember. You're asking me hard questions. <laughs> All right. Well, this has... Okay, I'm looking at it again. Okay, it's called the Cypher Effect, EMT. Oh, yeah, EMT super dope. Actually, he no longer lives in the state, but uh, he's been a good friend of mine throughout the past. And he was a rapper. He's featured in the Cypher. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we have Vanessa Lene, Clutch. Clutch. Clutch is dope. Does he's he still a, make music? He's actually a really good freestyler. Okay. Yeah, he kind of comes in and out of the scene, though. I okay, think, a little yeah. in and out of the scene. We have Bonnie Blue. Yeah. Inzom and yeah. Quota. Quota. Oh, Quota. I kind of forgot about Quota. Yeah, he's still, I see him on Instagram once in a while. But uh, yeah, he's uh, he's still doing his thing. I see him on his grind all the time. And so when this came out, like, oh, okay, it has 54,000 views, 160 comments. Every single comment is either six or seven years old. So I'm assuming <laughs> it kind of popped up right away. Like, was it, this was, I'm just trying to date it. Like, was this during Instagram phase? Probably not. I honestly, I don't think so. And do you remember when this came out and got kind of popping? Yeah, I do. I mean, it was great. It was cool. And then um, I did another one with him, actually. Okay. Another cypher. 
and it was great. But it, it was, I don't think it was the Instagram era. Probably not. I yeah. feel like it was the Facebook era. Yeah. The Facebook era. But yeah, this was really cool. Like I'll put a link to this in the in the video because it was just like I said, it's a real like piece of 805 history, really. Oh, cool. Like it's Thank you. it's really sick. <laughs> Glad to be a part of it. <laughs> so is cipher something that um, that you look to do more of? Do you like doing ciphers? Yeah, I actually was just in one. I haven't been in one for a long time, but I was at the 805 lab. Or lab 805. I always get dyslexic with it. Which one is I th- it? 805 I think it's lab? just called the 805 live, the lab or something. Lab. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I just did one there and it just dropped. It dr- actually dropped the same day as my video. So I, yeah. I got you. I'm a little biased son. <laughs> my video. <laughs> I feel you can't post twice in yeah, one day. Yeah, come on, man. So, okay, I want to look forward a little bit. Okay. What are some like music goals that you have for 2021? Like probably have shows starting back up sometime this year. We'll definitely have our show for mm-hmm. Underground Issue 3 yeah, I'm looking happening forward to that. in May. Um, what are some goals? Like what do you want to accomplish by this time next year? By this time next year, I, I want to solely just be working on music. You know, just that's all I do morning to night. And um, that's that's my main focus right now. Uh, but definitely I want, I would like to have at least eight more videos in the next year uh, for those projects, the Rocky Mesa 4 and Rocky Mesa 3 that you've seen. I want those visuals out, uh, but I want another project out, Rocky Mesa 3. I don't think it'll be called or Rocky Mesa 2, but uh, down the road I'll finish those. Mm-hmm. Um, but I do have a title for this one. I'm just not going to leak it yet. Okay, got you. <laughs> so we can expect those sometime in 2021. Yeah, that's my goal. Okay, and in terms of music videos, who directed the Get It video? Uh, Shooter Lux. He's actually a really dope rapper. Uh, he goes by Infinite. Okay, do you think you're going to go back to him to get those done? Yeah, possibly, yeah. I, I liked working with him. He's great. The visuals are great. I know, it really ended up great, like, I was very impressed by it. Good, thank you. So what else, what, where do you want to be this time next year? I know it's a difficult question. Like I always try to think about that with Underground. But I'm sure that you have some sort of layout. Like where do you want to be at by this time next year, streaming-wise, connections-wise? Have you given it much thought? Yeah, uh, definitely streaming-wise. I, that, that, I guess that's where the branding for Loch Ness is really coming into play because I, I want my fans to know that we're really like a family. And so uh, I think that's important to make them feel like a family, you know, not just fans that are just listening to my music. I want everybody to come together. I want them, you know, when they come to my shows to feel like they can approach me and we can talk and just shoot the shit. Um, but I think that for me, in order to build the streaming, I have to build my fan base. So. That's that's where I'm at. Yeah. Yeah. Now this is a difficult question, but I'm just gonna ask you, like, how do you build your fan base? Like, that's what we, a part of why I started Underground is because, like, all right, I came back from college and I noticed that there was this crazy world of 805 rap that I had never knew existed. All these random people, Pofsky, yeah, like College Cato, and a th- a big thought of mine was like, okay, maybe a reason why these people don't have bigger fan bases is because maybe there's just like some sort of media attention missing because like every piece of media we have in the 805 whether it's the acorn or ventura Mm -hmm. county star or whatever really not much is covering hip-hop maybe no cover magazine is covering hip-hop um that's where you guys come in and that's where we can that's kind of (laughs) where like i felt like we could fit this this need um so that's like my people ask me all the time too like oh how do these artists blow up how who's next up and I'm just like I have no idea I'm trying to help people by creating some sort of like if I can create a magazine that looks good and is legitimate it adds some sort of legitimacy Mm -hmm. to artists but I like to just ask artists like what are what is your opinion on how you can grow your fan base to a satisfactory amount in 12 months honestly that's the million dollar question you know that's every day that's something that I'm working on um I mean, it's it's all about being present. It's the social media world is insane. And if you can, uh, and honestly, I think it's a little bit of luck. If you do it at the right time and the right moment and you got the right video and it just, I mean, the silliest things blow up. And if you're the artist that like you post that right video at the right time, maybe it's who you know, I don't know. 
I'm still working on it, man. Do you think that you <laughs> have, you as an artist, you as a person have adapted to kind of the social media age of hip hop well? Trying, <laughs> you know, it's not always the easiest thing because I, I'm busy all day long. So it's another job. And uh, that's why I need a team. <laughs> that's a, if anybody, anybody wants to send an application to run social media, please. Uh, and honestly, I don't care for social media. I would not have social media if I was not an artist. That's true. That that's true. But you definitely recognize the need for it, yes, right? Like hundred percent. Ah, I know. I, f I feel the same. Like sometimes, like, do you ever feel like social media is like gives you like another layer of anxiety? Oh, hundred percent. Right, because it's like totally even just like running the underground account. It's like yeah. if you're not on it for five hours or something, then you've missed out on a million yeah. things. Tie Fighter made a music video, <laughs> and like Chandler's filming something else. It's like it's crazy and. But um, so you said if you don't, if you weren't an artist, you don't think you would no. do the whole social media game. No, I would not. That's fair. That's fair. <laughs> okay, I want to ask about one more, an, another thing that was um. I don't mean to just be bringing up past things, but like you're a <laughs> okay. relatively new artist to me, uh -huh. and really like stalking through your social media. Like I was, I was just like thought a lot of things were eye catching, and something you posted. I think you posted it yesterday was like you performed at like a boxing match. Yeah. So what's the story behind that? Where was that? I actually had a, a few boxing matches that I've performed at. Uh, my cousin actually, uh, Ray Chaparro, he's very, I think they have this restaurant, was it Cafe Irma, Ir I always forget, Army. I always, I get dyslexic, I don't know what my problem is. <laughs> uh, but he's also managed fighters and uh, he's always pitches me, hey, we've got a fight if you wanna open okay cool so i would just go open at boxing rings and like what's the what's the reception that you get when you show up probably all these dudes mm -hmm. i'm guessing yeah which coming, already coming to watch this boxing fight and vanessa Lene just pops up on the ring yeah like what is how is that performing in a kind of a, a seemingly awkward venue it is actually i mean it's cool because there's a lot of people there and everyone's just focused in on the ring but um, it is uh, kind of awkward. It's it's a little bit of an intimidating intimidating crowd, and at the same time, it's a four like sided stage. So you got to work the whole thing, and I'm getting tired like running around the whole thing. <laughs> um, and then the fact that my height is like right at the ropes, it's just kind of a weird thing, but it's cool. It worked out. Yeah, and so you've done out. that a couple times. Yeah. Yeah. And where is that? In, is that in, it's in Oxnard? Town? It's in Oxnard. Yeah. Um, I always forget what the community center is, but it's there. Somewhere in the depths of Oxnard. Yes. So what is what is like one of your what, what would you say is like your favorite part about being an artist? Do you like the recording process? Do you like the shows more? Do you have a part that that stands out to you that you look forward to the most? Mm, usually, usually the recording part. Uh, and definitely performing. It's mm -hmm. like I become a different person. This is this is I guess where there's two sides of Vanessa Lene. So you get Vanessa at home, and then you get Vanessa Lene on stage. So uh, most people who know me in my personal life, and then they finally see me on stage, like wow, like you just light up. Like you're so happy. I've never seen you this happy. So it's probably the performing, but the writing process is therapy for me. So. I love that part. Not always though, because that can be rough, you know. Um, but the recording is also fun. Mm -hmm. But yeah, performing is probably my favorite part. Okay, so you you grew up in Camarillo, right? Yes. Camarillo High School. Mm -hmm. What? And then when did you end up moving out closer to the Valley area? Uh, not for a while. I mean, I went up to college in Cal State Monterey Bay, Monterey Bay when I was seventeen. Came back. Uh, I've probably been out in Simi Valley for eight years now. Okay, and when you were out at out at Monterey Bay, were you making music at all? No, I was yeah. writing, and uh, I have memories of like bumping in the truck Eminem with my with my friends, just messing around. But I I never really did anything with it. Yeah, this is that roller coaster of being an artist. You come in and out of the scene. And I mean, you're busy at school. I mean, uh, yeah. it's hard to do it, I would assume, in college. Yeah. And you said you were a business marketing and entrepreneurship major. Yes. Do you think that 
what you've learned there has helped you navigate the music world today? Definitely, yeah. How so? Yeah, I mean, as an artist, you are an entrepreneur. And this is one of those things that I think a lot of artists don't understand is the business side of it. I think you have to be stronger in the business side of it than you do need to be as the artist, um, especially if you're doing it on your own. Uh, so I think that's definitely come into play. Um, and now the marketing with the whole social media thing, you gotta be on that game too. So it's definitely helped. It's It has its perks now. Yeah. Do you think it's helped you like just in person to person communication, like business entrepreneurship is something that takes a lot of communication skills. Mm -hmm. Do you think that's helped helped you in just like the non-social media aspect of marketing mm -hmm. yourself when you go to shows, when you meet people, things like that? Yeah, definitely. I think, um, and, and being in sales too, it's you, what I've always learned is from my family, my family's been in business for 40 some years. So you sell yourself you, and then you sell the family and the business and then the product sells itself. So for me, like when I'm at a show, I think it's really important for people to see the me, the real side of me, especially when I'm off stage, you know, be approachable and talk to people and hang out and be relatable, you know? So I'm actually uh, performing a song that I've never performed before. It's been in, on, you know, in the holster for two years. Is it released at all? Yeah, it's out, it's called Lost Love. And it's a very vulnerable song for me. And, uh, you know, it talks about all the stuff that I actually went through that kind of got me to where I'm at now and the type of person that I am. Um, so I'm going to perform it just solely on the fact that I know that my fans need to know a little bit more about me on a personal level and see that in real life. So I'm excited about that. So you would say, like, making a song that might be more emotional, might be more personal, isn't, like, maybe typical for you? Uh, yeah, not it's not something I do often, um, and, and I write them. I just don't record all of them, uh, but I think I need to do that a little more. Yeah, why do you think that you've had that hesitancy? Is it like maybe fear that people that fuck with your music aren't gonna like that new side of things? Uh, not so much that. I think it's just, as an artist, you have to be vulnerable, and there's some parts of you that you don't want the whole world to know, you know? and and. For me, I'm a very private person. So uh, it's hard to, there's that balance of being an artist and being a private person. So I think there's parts of me that just wanna hold on to those pieces. But I think in the long run, it'll help a lot of my fans understand like the things that I went through and I'm sure that they've gone through, you know, that there's a positive outcome. Life can get better. So I think that's really important for me to do. Do you think that you have you had like a life that you think has had ups, ups and downs that can you really put into music and really help people is that something that you think of yourself as definitely and that's why i started honestly uh when i was 15 i got super into eminem because i was very angry at that stage of my life eminem's and, an angry guy <laughs> yeah and you know and i related to him and he actually got me out of that and that's why i'm a rapper today and i and i see that that's um as an artist, you kind of have a responsibility to do that for other people. So that's a, that's a major goal now. So it, I would assume making music that is like that, it's personal, it probably does take like a bit of a leap of faith, right? Mm -hmm. Definitely. And <laughs> is that something that like you're ready to do? You're ready to start yeah. making more stuff like this? Like, so this is the first time that you're gonna be performing this song? Yes. Is it the first time that you're perform is I would assume it's like maybe probably maybe more of a slower vibe, yes. slower song. Is yeah. that something that you that you're comfortable with performing? I you know, I think that's something that uh, a reason why I haven't done that in a live show is because I always feel like maybe it just needs to be hyped. The energy needs to be going, but sometimes I think that people need to just be brought down for a second, you know, and then I don't know, I'm going to test it out. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll see. And we'll see how things go. Yeah. Okay, I wanna ask um, a little bit more about like, okay, how, we, we talked a bit, little bit about how like the 805 rap scene has changed, right? Mm -hmm. And you're saying like, maybe it's a little more flooded now with like similar vibe people, maybe trap, younger trap people. Mm -hmm. 
do you have you seen growth amongst like the OGs like Mark Ford? Like you've been able to be, see these people grow themselves even in ten plus years of making their music. Have you seen like growth within kind of the OG lyricist style of like the eight oh five veterans? Yeah, definitely. I mean they're still rocking and they still have, you know, they're diehard fans. So I think it's I think it's more of the newer age crowd needs to like open their mind to lyricism but doesn't that you know just what i mean and i mean we're uh, we're tr i'm trying to open my mind to some of the new stuff and it's catchy it's super catchy don't get me wrong i i definitely appe it's appealing but to me i like to listen to lyrics so i don't know it's i think it's always a battle so would you consider yourself more in like the younger new age or the older wiser lyricist uh, i don't know honestly i think i'm somewhere in the middle that's what i would say too yeah i i just kind of float around on my own do mm. my own thing <laughs> okay so something that you said um a few minutes ago is like the importance of being relatable mm -hmm. to people do you consider yourself somebody who's relatable yeah Definitely. Like who who do you think would relate to you? Like who is in your mind the perfect Vanessa Linnae fan? Ooh. Uh, I would say people that probably had, you know, some tough times in childhood and teenage years, but are very ambitious and very determined to, to have a better life. I think um, I think that people that have gone through some things that weren't their fault and they're trying to learn how to heal, I think that a lot of those type of people would really gravitate towards me if I was more vulnerable. Do you see yourself having guy fans? Is that yeah. something that exists right now? Do you have more guy fans and girlfriends? Is it mixed? Uh, it's mixed, but the guys definitely outweigh the girls. The guys which, outweigh the girls. Which surprises me sometimes. Because some guys can be very, oh, she's she's not a rapper. I'm not going to listen to her because she's a girl. It's the weirdest thing. Have you come across that a lot? Yes, I have. And I've actually had people had you know make the comments, but it's whatever. I what is know. like your response to that? Do you, like what do you think or say to people that question your skills or your ability as an artist, mm -hmm. as a rapper, as a female? I really don't give it a lot of attention. I don't because to me it's like they're probably upset because i rap better than them so i just move it on <laughs> just keep it moving <laughs> facts you got no time for that for real. yeah it's like okay does it feel weird to um be the only woman in the underground issue three is that like a weird thing or just not no i think it's awesome you know a lot of a lot of things that i do i'm usually the only female so i'm kind of used to it like the ciphers i'm usually the only female so you're used to it yeah and i actually i like that it, it, it pushes me to be better because I know I I know eyes are on me mm. to do well just for the simple fact that I'm a female so if I'm going to do something I'm going to do it to the best of my ability because I want them to know like I deserve to be here so. do you like to have that kind of all eyes on me underdog mentality people kind of questioning or doubting me person at, like is that something that helps inspire you yeah I think it does definitely I'm an athlete too so, or I was an athlete, and so I'm very comp competitive in that sense. Like, I, I just want to be good. I want to be the best, and I want to practice and excel. And um, when somebody doubts me or, you know, questions my ability, it's like, okay, let me show you. So, what sports did you play? When did you play sports? Back in the back in like high school? Uh, yes, uh, and college. Um, I played soccer, and I used to race BMX bikes. I used to race BMX bikes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's cool. Where did you do that? Like competitively, you actually yeah. did that. I actually was one of the national riders in like the top 10 national riders in my age group in the country. Okay. And then <laughs> you don't do it anymore. Though. No, I wish. Okay. Got you. That must be crazy. Is that like, uh, do you feel like you get into a same mindset when you're back, like BMXing, racing and like behind a mic recording? Like, is it the yeah. same like Mamba mentality, the same killer instinct that comes out in you, or is it is is making music something that's like just a totally different vibe? No, I mean there are moments of that adrenaline rush, 
you know, when when you're racing, it's like you're on the gate and you're waiting for it to drop. And, you know, your adrenaline's, you're excited. And it's the same thing kind of when you're about to go on stage. And I just feed off of that, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So outside of music, I mean, you said you've done some sports. Like what kind of other stuff do you like to do? What are some other hobbies you do? If you're not recording, what can people expect from you? Mm -hmm. I like to be at the beach or the lake. I'm a water baby, so I just feel better in the water. So uh, it just kind of keeps me grounded. I like to barbecue, you know, play in some cornhole, just hang out. Classic kickback vibes. Yeah, exactly. Sweet. All right, well, before we end things, I just want to kind of give you one more opportunity to just tell the world, like, what, what is there a future, a near future plan that you have coming out? Like, I know we talked about it a little bit, but what can people expect from you in March, April, May? Do you have anything lined up that you're willing to share with us? Definitely. I mean, it, please uh, pay attention to my social media this week because I'm going to be giving away a couple ticket or a couple slots on my list uh, for the show because uh, it's a limited capacity. Uh, that also, uh, obviously, the magazine. The that's magazine. insane. I'm so excited about that. So that's dropping. Um, and I'm just going to be doing as many shows as possible, whatever they'll give me, shows, yeah. interviews, anything. For real. What do you, just real quick, like regarding the magazine, mm -hmm. just what are some expectations that you have for it? Do you, have you thought about what it might look like, about having it actually in your hands? Like what are your thoughts on just the magazine process and what do you think, um, what do you think the final product is going to turn out to be? Uh, I mean, of course I've thought what I'm going to look like. I'm a female <laughs> um, and I'm the only female on the cover. So I definitely thought about what I look like, but uh, I trust you. I trust you won't make me look wonky on there. <laughs> uh, and, you know, I trust that you're not going to mix my words. So I, I have faith in, in your abilities in the magazine and everything you guys have done. So I'm excited. I just I'm just looking forward to it, man. Hell yeah, me too. I, my favorite part of it is always when we print them, give them to the artists. And it's like the first time they hold it in their hands. It's like they're on a magazine. Just like a lot of hard work coming down to this one thing that they have in their hands now. Yeah. It'll be awesome. That'd be cool. Yeah. I haven't been in a magazine, so let's All check right. that off the list. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much, Vanessa. What are you up to the rest of the day? I don't know. Probably shoot some uh, videos of 16 bars or some challenges I want to get into. So I'll probably do that today since my makeup's done today. I don't want to waste it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. A true, a true Instagram <laughs> musician, a true, yeah, yeah. a true marketer. A yeah. marketeer. Exactly. All right. Well, thank you so much. All right. Thank you. All right. <laughs> It's been a long ass week, man, it's time to go. I'ma call up the crew, we gon' hit the liquor store. We gon' pre-fade in the parking lot, you can meet us there. Bring a friend, I got friends, yo, we all need a pair. We might not even make it up in this club. We don't give a fuck about a booth. We too busy trying to booty rub on the dance floor, sweating all. We vibing on the alcohol, no memory tomorrow. I'ma take a video. We're out here. Let's go. The squad. Squad. <laughs> For real, they have that energy. Like, yeah. They're just like off in this weird compound in this weird part of Ventura I've never been to. <laughs> you pull up there and then it's just like.